Hey, thank you so much for coming out. I want to share with you all a story about ham. Yes, ham. I know it sounds silly and random, but as you may have all noticed, Spanish people don't think ham is silly or random. In fact, Spanish people take their jamón very seriously. Spain is the world's biggest producer and consumer of ham. 40 million of them a year, to be exact. Here you can see ham hanging from ceilings and bars, in department stores, and even in airports, everywhere that you wouldn't expect them to be. So my first week at my internship at an NGO in Madrid, I was invited to the daily coffee break by a coworker. Wanting to get to know my coworkers better, I nervously grabbed my wall and headed out with them, trying to review mentally all the Spanish that I knew, so I could converse with them like an intelligent human being. So we get to the cafe, and the four of us sit at a table, and the waiter comes and takes our order. Five minutes and a rapid flurry of Spanish later, he comes back with a churros con chocolate, a bocadillo of jamón, some pastries, and coffee. My coworker Livia turns to me and goes, so what are you studying? I told her I was studying public health. What exactly is that, she asked. Is that like a doctor? Well, not quite, I said. I racked my brains trying to think of the best way to explain this in Spanish and decided to give an example. And what better example of a public health problem than obesity? Yes, obesity, America's biggest health problem. No pun intended. You see, I told her a doctor would work with an individual or a person who is obese, but somebody working in public health would work to reduce public, the amount of obesity in the community as a whole. I then pointed at the churros con chocolate and asked if it was actually a common breakfast in Spain. Because I couldn't possibly imagine how a country that has deep fried dough and melted chocolate for breakfast manages to keep its waistline so slim. My coworker Inigo responded that, yes, it was a pretty common breakfast. I looked back in disbelief. But how, I asked, do you guys manage to keep your waist so slim and have so much longer life expectancies? when you're eating all this churros con chocolate and jamón. He looked at me, confused. But jamón is one of the healthiest things you can eat, he told me. I looked back skeptically. <laughs> Ham? Healthy? You're telling me that processed meat, processed red meat and pork meat of all meats is healthy? If you all remember, at the end of last year, the World Health Organization released a report classifying processed meat as a definite cause of cancer. Just to be clear, processed meat includes meat that has been salted, cured, smoked, or otherwise preserved, like bacon, sausages, salami, and of course, ham. So as what I consider to be a pretty well-read public health student, I was ready to fight this man. <laughs> <laughs> now this, of course, was my preconceived notion of ham. And because I had this established idea in my head, there was no room for any other possibilities or alternatives. I'm sure you have all had instances in which you had it so set in your mind that you were going to do something a certain way, that there were no possibilities or alternatives in your mind. There's actually a name for this phenomenon in psychology terminology called the Einstein effect. The Einstein effect is one of the first, pro one of the first ideas that come to mind prevent alternatives from being considered. Alternatives that might even be better. It was first discovered by a man named Abraham Lukens. So Abraham Lukens gave a group of people a set of five practice problems that could all be solved by one method. He then gave them a test problem that appeared similar but could not be solved by the same method. The group worked with this problem for a while before declaring that it was insoluble. But it's not that this problem itself was inherently difficult, because when Lukens gave this exact same problem to another group, they solved it fairly quickly. So what magic advantage did the second group have that the first group did not? Well, unlike the first group, the second group wasn't given the five practice problems to prep beforehand. You see, the first group had a hard time solving the problems because they couldn't see any other way to solve problems than the one that had been working for them before, for the past five problems. Here we see that previous knowledge is what limited them from seeing alternatives. So with this eye-stalling effect in mind, let's re-examine my reaction to my coworker telling me that Ham was healthy. I 
was ready to help educate him and tell him why ham was, in fact, not healthy at all. I was getting all worked up, and, but just when I opened my mouth to speak, I paused and I thought, well, let's hear him out. So I asked him, Inigo, what do you mean ham is healthy? He shrugged and told me he didn't know. He just knew that it was good for you and much better for you than a McDonald's hamburger, which apparently is all we eat, all that we Americans eat, McDonald's hamburgers and Coca-Cola. <laughs> so when I got home that day, I called upon my little friend on the internet to do some research of my own. And here's what I found. Over 75% of the fat found in jamón ibérico de beota is unsaturated, making it the most cardio-healthy of all animal meats, and even more cardio-friendly than some plant-based fats. Jamón ibérico is rich in multiple kinds of vitamin B, the powerful antioxidant vitamin E, and, and folic acid. It also has several minerals, such as copper, calcium, iron, magnesium, and selenium. And finally, 55% of the fatty acids found in jamón ibérico are made up of oleic acid, which is the same fat that is found in olive oil, which has been shown to reduce bad cholesterol and promote heart health. In fact, there, other than olive oil itself, there is no other food that has a higher oleic content than jamón ibérico. So much so that Spanish people often refer to ibérico pigs as olivos con patas, or olives <laughs> with legs. <laughs> the idea that ham could maybe kind of sort of be healthy was completely mind-blowing to me. It was an entirely foreign concept, and I would have never learned about it if I, hadn't making, if I hadn't taken the conscious choice to put my own preconceived knowledge aside and listen with an open mind. This practice is something that is known in Zen Buddhism as Shoshin, or beginner's mind. It's about going into things with an attitude of openness, eagerness, and a lack of preconceptions. Going into things with an open mind allows you to learn more because you aren't limited by your own by your what your previous knowledge was like what we saw in the Einstein effect it can allow you to learn more but more importantly it can allow you to it can allow you to make the most out of your experiences and your conversations you see what i implied shoshin in that conversation with my coworkers in the cafe i wasn't just learning trivia about hamon I was experiencing an integral part of the Spanish culture. I got to see jamón the way Spanish people see their jamón, with pride and adoration. As explained by this Museo of Jamón in Barcelona, <laughs> jamón es una pierna de cerdo, sal, tiempo, y mucho cariño. In other words, jamón is a leg of pork, salt, time, and much care and attention. And yes, that is a jamón of gold. <laughs> the Zen monk Shunyu Suzuki once said, In the beginner's mind, there are many possibilities, but in the expert's mind, there are few. So how can we apply this idea to your own lives, more specifically, your travel experiences? When we travel, the einstein effect can prevent us from asking questions or experiencing new things because we think that we already know enough about them. That's why it's important to practice Shoshin. In closing, I want to share with you all an anecdote about how practicing Shoshin, or this beginner's mind, gave me the best travel experience of my life and taught me how to really enjoy traveling. So my friend and I had a 6 a.m. flight to Lisbon, Portugal, and we decided that it was a good idea to pull an all-nighter the night before and go to the airport directly at 4 a.m. Well, as you can imagine, when we arrived, we were completely exhausted. So we agreed to take a 30 minute nap before heading out to explore the city. 30 minutes turned into three hours, and before we knew it, it was 5 p.m. and we hadn't even set foot outside of our Airbnb. Now to provide some context, I am very big on planning and organizing and schedules. Itineraries are essential to my travel plans. Or rather, they were. Because having fallen out of the plan, I was completely panicked. 
I was frantically looking up on my phone what monuments and museums were still open, where we could go for dinner, what time to sunset, where to go at night. Well, my friend took my phone out of my hands and told me, Minji, traveling is supposed to be fun and relaxing. Let's just go walk outside. I was so distraught at this point that I completely gave up. I could not possibly see a way to fix the problem of having lost half a day in a new city that I hadn't explored. To me, this problem was, at the time, insoluble. So we walked outside, wandering around the steep cobblestones of Lisbon, appreciating the beautiful architecture and getting lost in the pretty pastel facades of the city. And serendipitously, we stumbled across the best viewpoint in all of Lisbon, right at sunset. And as we sat there watching the sunset, laughing and talking, I realized how absolutely and completely blissful I was. You see, without a schedule, I wasn't constantly checking the time to see when we would have to leave. And having napped, even though it was not on the plan, I felt fully rested and was able to be present in the moment and appreciate everything that was going on around me. And I realized that there was another way to travel, a better one, that was not my own. One that allowed more room for flexibility and that focused on the company. Shoshin, a beginner's mind. So I want you all to think how you can apply Shoshin or this beginner's mind to your own lives, whether it be in your personal life, your professional life, or in, any, or in your academic life. How can having a beginner's mind or an open attitude enhance your travel, your conversations, and your studies? If you have a more open mind, you might be able to see connections that other people can't. You'll be more willing to make mistakes and then maybe learn from those mistakes, knowledge that even experts don't have. And maybe if you take the time to ask your friend how exactly they are feeling or what they are thinking without making assumptions of your own, you'll be able to form a more stronger connection with them. So as we all go on to travel the world, to innovate our fields and make connections with other people, I encourage you all to actively practice Shoshin, to become beginners once again, and to learn from the olives with legs. Thank you.